and a very good welcome from Sonny uh, Carrick Fergus amidst this crazy times, crazy times all over the world. But that's something that we're used to because we are the fantasy crew. This is Trevor Kennedy. I'm GCH Riley, Gabrielle, from Phantasmagoria. And we are very, very lucky to be in the secret bookstore in Carrickfergus. And it's not that much of a secret. Um, whereabouts is this place, Trevor? How, do you, how does one come here? It, it, it's, it's just um, not far from the castle, Car Carrickfergus Castle, just up, up a bit. Uh, and there's like a sort of arcade um, where it says gift shop outside. Uh, just go in. And uh, just go to the right, and you'll you'll see the secret iron, bookshop. Iron, iron staircase. Look yep. for an iron staircase to your right. And I have to say, this is my first time being here, and it's really, really beautiful. There is beautiful books, beautiful works of art, and the best thing about today is we are meeting Ian McDonald. I go to the open with envelope, you know. Would <laughs> 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 wouldn't we all? Because we are we are writers, and writers can be a little bit reclusive at times. Yep. So. We are socially distancing as much as we can. We have, like I said, the beautiful sunny Carrick yeah. weather. You know, we've got the sea air coming in, so hopefully we're all gonna be safe. Yeah. Ian, it's a pleasure to, to meet you. And to, to you. Yes, and to speak with you today. And can you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself from the horse's mouth <laughs> itself. Hi, I'm, I'm Ian McDonald. I science fiction writer of many years standing. Uh, I live across the loch over in Hollywood, um, kind of um, award nominated and award winning. I think I'm on my 25th novel by now. I, I can't remember the old blur after a while. 25? I think so, yeah. We've, lo we've lost count? Uh, yeah, I, I, I just forget the early ones. Because some of them I don't actually remember writing. So. <laughs> but they're all available? Uh, they're all available either in print or actually, or uh, a lot of them available as ebook on your favourite large North American river. I shouldn't say that. Uh, so sorry, sorry, South American river. Which I probably shouldn't say, but that's the only ones that really, really deal with the back catalogs. So you've been writing for some time, and is it preliminary? Uh, is it mostly fantasy? It's, mo it's mostly science fiction, with the odd stray into fantasy and the occasional bit of horror. Just on a ghost story, actually, for uh, Reggie Chamberlain King's forthcoming ghost story anthology, which I'm rather proud of because it's proper scary. But it's usually in the area of the literature of the fantastic, somewhere or other. Is it? Would your writing be akin to Ian M. Banks? Well, there's an awful lot of Ians in science fiction, <laughs> and we're, we're kind of all of an age. Actually, there's about I know at least six Ians in science fiction over in these islands. Uh, he's kind of more space opera. I tend to stay a little bit closer to home. Um, uh, the furthest I've really got away in space and time is just as far as the moon, which which which, which was the Luna series. Uh, usually, I, I kind of stay kind of near future stuff that looks like cyberpunk but isn't really. Um, usually set in places that cyberpunk doesn't think about. Cyberpunk tends to you know shiny places like Japan or Korea, like some interesting places like Brazil or. Istanbul, places that have been overlooked so far by Western science fiction, Excellent. or or where when I wrote the book. So so interesting, um, right? So you've been writing for quite some time, and now we are on to the last segment or the current segment of the the Luna. <laughs> it's the Luna trilogy. Trilogy. But for now. For now. For, for now. now. For now. Well, when when can you tell me when did you start the Luna and how how did it um, incarnate? It, it, it's, 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 it's one of those good questions, right? Well, that's where your ideas come from. And it was uh, my partner, Enid, was lurking around in the background somewhere, was watching the reboot of Dallas, which was garbage. The only good thing was. Uh, <laughs> Sue Ellen? No, no, no. <laughs> she wasn't in it. It was J.R. Ewing, who everyone knows was the best. Of Larry Hagman. Larry, the great Larry Hagman, yeah. And he was the only good thing in it. And I was kind of looked at the whole thing of this kind of like this intense family that kind of. Threaten on all sides, but but they hate each other more. And have and I've been interested in doing a, a moon. I've always liked moon based stories, and I kind of thought, what if you take some set up like that with this really intense family setup, yeah. put them somewhere where you can't escape, you oh, can't get that. out of the game. 
track the growers are just interested, interested to write about, and the two ideas just collided. It's, it's, originally, the picture was Dallas on the moon, and then my uh, publishers changed it to said, so "Either that's so 1980s, it's Game of Thrones on the moon." So. But the, well, 1980s is brilliant because that's you know that is a real purple patch period for fantasy. It sure was. Yeah. So, um, so as you say, it's it's world building. But it's also families are a world onto themselves. Yeah. You know, if you go to one of your friends' houses for dinner, you know, you're you're an alien if you don't take a, a cookie with, <laughs> with your tea, or if you, you 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 know you know how families are. So, um, what is the overall feeling of what is happening with Luna? Is it a thriller? Is it a submarine? You know, Ooh, tense. That's a good one. Sub submarine is a good one. Uh, uh, I've always loved it's people trapped as well. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, on, on the cover it says the moon knows a thousand ways to kill you, and and, and, and the dark side of the moon as well. Dark side of the moon, yeah, which is just the far side of the moon. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, and it's 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 that whole thing of people who they seem they seem to live in a world that we would, we would think is hell, but it's the only world they know, and they have to make it work for them. It's, it's an old. Milton thing, you know, I mean, the mind can make a hell of heaven and a heaven of hell, or words to that effect. That's right, it's, it's, very, it's kind of William Golding as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there's that a, kind of yeah. Thing. yeah. Okay, and yeah, so is there anything else that you would like to say about the, the, the last incarnation? It just about works. Okay, so it's a labour of love. It was a labour of, yeah, it was, um, it took me five years to write the series and I'd forgotten an awful lot of stuff by the time I got to volume three and I was in a hurry when I did it, I was under pressure. Um, in a sense it was my my French, Spanish and German translators who'd all worked in the previous volumes basically said Ian this book is a mess and they effectively copy edited it for me uh -huh. and, and so picked up all the errors. But this is part of the process, isn't it? The constructive criticism. It's 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 it's, a tra it's translators doing their job. You know, they, um, they, they they did a fantastic job. Um, I got Gilles, Gilles Boulet, uh, my French translator, sent me forty pages of notes. <laughs> 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 and translators, the way they work is they basically estimate how long it's going to take and put in a bid based on how long they think it's going to take. It took them a lot longer. But together they all work together and they did a fantastic job. So it it just shows you collaboration. Well, that's it is. No man is an island. Yeah, it, it's true. Unless you live on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> or Ireland, which is an island. <laughs> which is an island. Well, from what I've read through Luna, I've picked up bits and pieces. I haven't had the time to give it my full attention, yep. but I can see that it is an expansive, complete world. It is very accomplished, Ian. Thank you. Um, but what? It's very dirty as well. There's lots of dirty sex. <laughs> well, <And but> violence. <laughs> of, of course. This, I mean, this is the home of Game of Thrones, yes, so of course. Yes. Bang with your PG rating. <laughs> well, speaking about, you know, um, personal lives, what's the difference between research and writing in a book of that sort of scope? And is there any word on the TV development, potentially? Uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's in a six month extension on development actually all TV projects are basically have gone on hold for six months. Um, That's right with Stranger Things that yeah, happened as yeah, well. All of them, yeah. Uh, there is there is another project which I cannot speak yet. Uh, and as the thunder rumbles. Yeah. <laughs> for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing about research is you um, things present themselves all the time. Yeah, you you throw out 80% of your research, you only use 20% of it, but until you've done it all, you won't know which 20% you need. So that's, you have to do all the That's way. right, so it takes a very long time. It does, and, and also stuff, I started from 20, 2012, put the first ideas down, 2013, 2014 wrote the first one. And I was using current knowledge about the moon, and this now six years later, we know an awful lot more. That's right. And stuff I thought was right then isn't right, apparently. But I'm stuck with it because I can't change it. Well, well, that's what they're telling us, Ian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, so even though the stuff has been superseded, I had to keep it consistent all the way. This is it. Once things are published, and then you have to go back and remember, and especially with dynasties and. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's somebody out there um, did a Luna Monopoly set, which I have as a rather nice as a present. Quite flattering. It's very, very flattering. Really, yeah. But the amount of work that goes into that is incredible. But this, but this is the labour of love. It is. You lose yourself. <laughs> But that's but that's escapism, and that's you know as horror fantasy fans, th that's what we're in it for. That's the name of the game. Um, right. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to move away from Luna now. Um, you were the guest of honor at Worldcon in Dublin last year. Yep. How important has it been for the Irish genre community? And when did you decide that a gin drinking panel would be a good thing? Uh, well, Please yeah. tell me. The world <laughs> needs to know. Yeah, it, it's. I, I was. I was. I was asked uh, by James Bacon, the chair of uh, of an Irish convention, um, and it's a very great honour because you get it once in your lifetime, and that's it. So now I can go and die happily. You know, I've, I've reached the peak. It's all downhill from now. It's down, <laughs> down, down, down to senility, you know, incontinence. I'm spent. Yeah, that's it. I've done it all. I've seen the fort. Um but it, it, it was a huge honour to be asked, and Indeed. Irish fandom, it's been around for a long time, it's very well organised, it integrates really well with UK fandom and with and with the US fandom, it's a cross, it's a cross border body and it always was, uh -huh. um, and I think kind of what it showed was that there's another, having the column there, it showed there's another side to Irish writing, that it's not, you know, all the ones that get quoted all the time, it's not, it's not that kind of slightly respectable well written you know kind of things with literary chops we can get down and dirty um we have a great history of the of, of literature of the fantastic mm -hmm. i mean i i mean i defy anyone to say that uh, the third policeman isn't surrealist fantasy <laughs> well, we, most <laughs> stuff by flannery brown um but we but we just tend to be a little bit kind of a little bit ashamed of it because it's not part of the canon that's right but uh but what having the world call there was saying here is you know here is Irish fantastic literature horror fantasy science fiction weird you name it we can do this we're good at it and the world's come you know to kind of join yeah join it's, us it's, in it's this. like our turf it is but it, it is pretty much our turf yeah we, um, homegrown yeah when I was a kid at school in English um, moved into secondary school um, in English our we, we basically got given, said read this, and it was all the, Ar the Irish mythology, all the all the Fenian cycle of um, Finn McCool, all the Ulster cycle of Cahalan, all the in all the other secondary tales as well. And there is no canon for that. It's, no. it's really just word of mouth. As it well. is, yeah, yeah. But we read that, and then the next year we wrote the Norse gods. So we never got excellent. So we never got the classical stuff. You know, we never got yeah. all that Greek stuff. No, we, we were strictly northern and Celtic, and that kind of shaped me. And it's gritty as well. It's it real is. people. And it's totally alien to the classical mindset as well. It's completely different. It's it's it's, it's same as Indian mythology. It's totally alien to kind of the Greek and Roman kind of classical mindset. It's a totally different way of thinking. So you, so, you, so you think you were blessed to get that education? Ah, it was, yeah. Um, yeah, well, yep, yeah, it, it made me the writer I am. That's fantastic, Ian. Thank you. Um, is there, would you have any advice for people that love fantasy, they, you know, they absorb it, they eat it for their breakfast, and they've always wanted to write, they've always wanted to world build, but where did it begin, you know? Do, I think I feel some people lack a bit of confidence. Do you have any advice? Mm. I, I think the, the important thing is to start with your characters. Who are these people? See them first. Once you've got the people, the world falls in around them. Because everyone, all of us, experience a different world from each other. You know, our worlds are very different. Our family backgrounds are different. Our societies are different. You know, class, religion, any number, there any number of different stuff. So, every character sees a different bit of their world and I think it's kind of and as a reader you can only see that world through your character's eyes but once you get the characters first then then you notice what they notice and that and, that, and things start to organically yeah that's the word organically yeah. uh, the great thing about any kind of alien society is what is what your characters take for granted 
stuff that our world would take for granted. Like in the Gormenghast is a bit grim. There is, you know, people aren't perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best right. characters. The, but yes. Yeah. It, it, it speaks. <coughs> Hello, yeah. Trevor. Welcome, welcome to the panel. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, told, I told you to shut me up, you know, did you? No. <laughs> well, Tre Trevor's my pretend husband, so I, I, I get to do that. Oh, oh dear, it's on camera. <laughs> Trevor, would you do you have anything that you would like to ask Ian? Ah, um, no, no, just um, I think Ian pr pr pretty much covered it, Dan. So it was just um, perhaps um, you know, one of the questions is, is, is you know, the, the thing where you're writing about cultures and identities. I know mm. there's been uh, yes, the, the, there's this thing at the minute. It's uh, own voices, and you are writing across many cultures and identities, Ian. How would you, how do you go about researching um, a culture that isn't your own, and then also when dealing with this? this issue at the minute, own voices. How would you put it, Trevor? Well, it's, uh, there has been some criticism for certain fantasy and sort of science fiction writers, or fiction writers in general, hasn't there, for um, basically, uh, essentially a form of cultural appropriation, isn't it? Isn't it maybe? Yeah. Where yeah. people, where writers have been told by certain sections on social media that they shouldn't be writing about certain cultures or whatever if they haven't actually lived that culture. Well, well, people it. always say write about what you know, but I mean, it, it is fantasy, it is fiction, but so, so they sort of have a point in a way, but it's a bit, I don't know, how do you feel about this? Uh, you have to put the work and you have to pay respect, respect to what you're doing and, you have, to, and you, you have to learn and you have to listen to what other people are saying as well. If, yeah, you if, don't take a sledgehammer doing nothing. Well, no, no you don't, and, yeah, and, yeah, and you don't... Yeah, and yeah, and you do, and you, and you, and you have to learn how things link together. Nobody ever gets anything about their own culture right. The stuff happens at the bottom of my street, which is completely alien <laughs> to anything in my experience. <laughs> they all say, you know, that every every human virtue and vice can be found within half a mile of your front door. You know, the, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, worlds also become very small places, and we can't possibly see all of them. But yeah. it, but it's a question of, for me. I think you know when I was I was at a festival in so I'm sorry about this I'm banging on. Oh, you're fine. I was, I was at a festival in India uh, back last year and met a lot of really fantastic Indian writers that were fantastic and their problem is they can't get published in the U.S. because they're being choked out by Indian um, and South Asian di diaspora voices in the U.S. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's people whose parents come from India yes. they were born in the U.S. and they're writing about their parents. So they say, hey, we, we, you know, okay, you're writing about that experience, but that is a different experience. Yeah. That's the diaspora experience. It's a perfectly valid thing worth writing about, but it's different from living in India. Um, um, so, so it's it's a, it's a, it's kind of it's. I think it's about balance. balance. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's never let your own kind of. Uh, yeah, never take yeah never take things for granted and, and never make assumptions and listen. Yeah, and this is much more than this. Sorry, sorry, sorry about this. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. What's your book there? It looks oh, yes. great, actually. Yes, and that's um, sort of um, the latest issues of, um, well, some of the latest issues of Phantasmagoria. That's the, um, the, the Lovecraft. Lovecraft Squad special. It's uh, uh, a special with it of uh, Phantasmagoria magazine oh, based so on the um, series, you know, the anthology series um, by Stephen Jones, edited by Stephen oh, Jones. So there's quite a few of the, the authors um, were interviewed in it, um, including Mike Chin, Adrian Cole. Douglas Kleuba, who's the cover yeah. artist, who actually said that wonderful cover, co cover art there. And um, that's actually the same um, cover art from one of the Lovecraft Squad um, mm -hmm. books. So it is, then you have, you have Kim Newman there in there as well, you know, the famous yeah. uh, column, um, critic Mac uh, Mac and Mac author Mac. as well in his own right. John Llewellyn Probert, Angela Slatter, um, Lisa Morton, uh, Michael Marshall Smith. So yeah, it's quite a, a packed sort of issue and sort of, yeah. And could, if someone was interested in Phantasmagoria or Luna or some of your other uh, earlier works, where are they available? Yeah, in the secret book In the shop. secret book store. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in, in Carrick. Carrick. Yes, it's uh, not that secret. Just yeah. look for the Iron we're Circus hoping, hoping through the, the art. Um, to let as many people know about the secret as possible. So we are. But yeah, I mean, um, Phantasmagoria is also available uh, from Amazon throughout the world, you know, some of, some of the other issues there. We did one on Warchep and Hayes, and you know, um, um, the, the latest one actually, um, 
a big interview with um, Graham Masterton, yes, um, who, who was uh, interviewed by um, Mark Damien Lawler. Um, so yeah, and, um, the, and this one as well, the secret bookshop is mentioned, and its proprietor Joe Zabody, who is mm. a leading voice in world so. building fantasy. Um, and also there is an interview again. Yes, with you. With, yes. Lo with, with is Loki Ian is in it as well? No, not yet, but we're no. hoping getting in so at some point. So oh, we are, sure. yes. Uh, what yeah. what else cheap, is I'm cheap and hard to shut up. By the way, your production standards are sky high on that. It looks fantastic. Yeah, thank actually. you, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean as I always say with Phantasmagoria, uh, you know, a lot of people sort of congratulate me and sort of, you know, they would be very, very nice to me and very kind to of me. But like I say, um, it is always a great team effort, so it is, you yeah. know, for from uh, plus the, the, the guidance and stuff that I've been getting from you know some of the top um, people in, in the field, um, you know top journalists and authors and stuff, but also well, this is know, what Ian said at the start as yeah. well. Collaboration. It's all about collaboration. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, everybody about. learns from each yeah. other. Um, Absolutely. Before we and artists as well, you know. Before we round this up, lads, what is in the pipeline, both of you, please? Go ahead, Ian. I know um, the public need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> a much a much delayed novel is going to be delayed again because of the, uh, because of the I've got a novella out at the moment, uh, Luna base, a Luna novella, uh, Menace and Farside, a bit of And what have you got? Well, I'm currently working on the next issue of Phantasm Warrior, which will be out in a couple of weeks' time. And What's the, the thing? Well, no, this one is just one of the sort of, um, you know, of, of the main sort of um, issues. So it is so it's quite a mix in it. So there is, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, it's quite a mix. Uh, but, but the um, headline interviews, are with um, fantasy artist Randy Brocker, uh, who's based in Chicago. Also, um, horror author legend Ramsey Campbell. Oh, yeah. And Richard, best selling American author Richard Chismar. So, also in there is Anna Taborska, who is a Polish um, author and filmmaker. And there's quite a few other interviews in there as well. Um, you know, and and a local slant as well, you know, as we always do. And loads of fiction. Art, brilliant articles, reviews, and absolutely top class artwork. None of the artworks are mine, by the way. You know what I mean? They're they're all these great artists. That, you know what I mean? I couldn't. I wanted to be a fantasy artist as a kid, but you know, it, alas, it wasn't to be. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. And before um, we we leave it, um, lads, how has lockdown been treating you? Because personally speaking, I think if anyone's feeling a little bit fed up, um, there's always a silver lining. Make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> you know, enjoy taking a break. Enjoy doing the things. You know, read out all your bookshelves, and you know, give yourself a spring clean. You know, because we're going into we're going to be going into twenty twenty one soon, and this has been a brilliant time for anyone that has kids and is running around and doing like loads of different things. Take the time to just read a bit of fantasy, write a bit of fantasy. Take time for yourself. So, what do you guys think? It's yeah well I mean I've been I struggled in the early sort of couple of months of the lockdown, but what got me through it was keeping busy with the likes of the magazine and the yeah. other projects like Russian and Grotesques. Taking it in and your stuff. stride. Yeah, that's it exactly exactly. And but and yourself David. Business as usual. I mean before I sat. <laughs> He's in, so pragmatic. <laughs> before I sat in a room and typed, I still still sit in a room and type. It's no different. I just drink more margaritas now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Well. That has been, thank you so much, Ian. It's so thank weird you. not to like, you're not allowed to touch, but thank you, Ian, that was real, real yep. pleasure. Yep. This, 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 yeah, yes, this, yes, this. Yeah. Yeah. Elbows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So um, thank there you, you Ian McDonald. Thank you, thank Trevor Kennedy. I've you. been uh, Gabrielle Riley, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you, appreciate it.